Perhaps the most dramatic discovery for the American energy picture in the last decade has been the, the ability to access the gas that's stored in the shales around the country. The shale gas revolution has caused a shift in thinking about energy that no one pictured. It's been remarkable to see how much this energy conversation has changed because of the enormous natural gas resources that we have today. Shale is a very dense, hard rock that has organic matter in it, and that organic matter is a source of natural gas. The shale revolution is essentially extracting gas directly from the source rock. We knew the gas was there, we simply didn't think we would ever get it out in, uh, in quantities that would make a commercial well. In the 90s, we had some very innovative energy companies, and they made the investment to use this technology to be able to produce natural gas from shale. It's just an amazing idea that this solid rock that we thought was worthless just a few years ago now is a newly abundant domestic resource that is the game changer for American energy policy. It wasn't long ago that energy experts were all asking how the United States would manage dependence on imported natural gas. In you know, 2006, uh, the big issue was whether the United States was running out of natural gas, uh, would we have to import natural gas. Terminals to import gas were being proposed and, and actually built, all on the assumption that the price of natural gas would be high and rising because we were running out of it here in the U.S. And now the conversation has transformed entirely. We aren't talking about dependence on imports. We're talking about uh, how to govern domestic natural gas production. We're talking about what to do with the gas. And we're even talking about the potential for the United States to be a significant exporter of natural gas. The quest in the United States since the early 70s has always been domestic as opposed to oil imports from regions that we can't control. The excitement in the air today is that there are all kind of indications that we might be moving toward a greater domestic energy supply to back out to a more manageable level those kind of oil imports. A lot of people know of natural gas because they've cooked with it at home, and that's one use. In fact, it's a great fuel for cooking. But we can also use it for heating and heating water and for drying our clothes at home. So we have a variety of appliances at home we can use it in. But that's just a small piece of the pie. We use a lot of natural gas in the power sector. We use more natural gas than nuclear in the power sector. So it's a, an important source of electricity. We use it as a feedstock for making different things like fertilizers. So if you're eating food, that food probably came from crops grown with fertilizers made from natural gas. And then natural gas gave the heat we need in industry to make the products that we use to eat the food on. And then it gave us the electricity to cook that food in or the gas at the stove to cook it. So natural gas is a big part of society across all sorts of sectors in ways that most people don't even realize. So when you think about someone's life, every single thing that we use, the clothes we wear, the medical equipment that we rely on, I mean, a lot of the stuff that we use comes from these molecules. The benefits of, of unconventional gas development, development of shale gas in the U.S. are very clear. Number one, it reduces our dependence on imported oil. Number two, it creates domestic jobs in the U.S. Number three, it's, it has tremendous environmental benefits. It has half the emissions of coal in terms of CO2 emissions, very little sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxides, but it has more emissions than other sources of electricity like nuclear power and renewables. As recently as 2005, you saw interest in building power plants across a wide range of technologies. Uh, in 2011, 2012, natural gas is basically the only major large-scale player in town because it's so much cheaper than the alternatives. It's cheaper fundamentally than nuclear. It's cheaper than coal. People in the environmental community, energy experts, see gas as an extraordinarily important bridge to getting us to renewables. What natural gas has done is put the final nail in the coffin for construction of coal plants. That is a victory that a lot of people are supporting. Then it turns out 
that we don't just have shale here in the United States. There's shale in Canada. The eagle fruit extends into Mexico. Turns out that Argentina has shale. Africa has shale. And Russia has shale. So it turns out that the shale is all around the world. And the question is, you know, how will that change the world? Maybe it'd be a better world, right? Everybody's in control of their own energy. And a lot of countries are banking on natural gas as a solution to climate change, again, because it's cleaner than coal. However, we are seeing some increased criticism of natural gas, given it is still a fossil fuel. Just recently, California passed a very aggressive law that by 2045, 100% of its electricity needs to be carbon free. Now that would exclude natural gas, unless you put on expensive technology that can capture carbon emissions from the smokestacks of a plant. We have this shale gas. We're pulling it out. It's driven the price of gas way down. It helps us with a discussion about independence. We're not buying this gas from someplace else. We're producing it ourselves. But like anything, now we have to reflect for a minute on what does it mean? How do we do it responsibly? Because like everything, there are costs and trade-offs. If we're going to do this right, it's important that our gas companies are accepting of regulations that has them follow best practices in the extraction of that gas. With any extraction process, there are costs associated with risk. It's important that we bring those risks to the lowest level possible. That means we've got to case our wells, we have to control our chemical usage, and our water usage. Our clean energy future is going to be very much shaped by what we do with these gas fines that we've seen across the country. It's ours, it's accessible, it's cleaner, if not the cleanest, and it's available in such massive quantities in so many different places across the country that it has the capacity to change the equation.